Let's look at how we can use Cam Assist in a situation where we want to set up machining for two operations, with separate work holding situations on the same part and for processing at the same time. In this example, we have set up demo part 5 to have machine group 1 and 2 side by side, instead of top and bottom. This is a common process for setting up live production runs and for keeping your spindles turning. What we are going to show is how to use Cam Assist to generate a set of operations for machine group 1, the top side of the part, and then use the resulting stock model as the stock for machine group 2, the bottom side of the part. Operation 1 will use rectangular stock, while the second operation will use a mesh model based on the stock model from Operation 1. Let's have a look at the stock setup for Machine Group 1. We have a solid of the rectangular stock to choose, and we will choose the part body for the master model. Note that we will be using different master models for the two machine groups in this video. Next, we can use Cam Assist to create the tool pads for Machine Group 1. We won't go into too many details here, but it is important to know that we will only be selecting Machine Group 1 in the Setup Orientation section, and we'll keep the selected plane as the top. We are just using a demo tool library, and the machining mode is Automatic 3 plus 2. We will hide the Machine Group 2 bodies just for clarity, but this is not necessary. We will also speed up the video here for the actual computation and generation phases. Once CAM Assist computes the toolpath operations, we will need to generate them in order to verify them and build the stock model. In this case, we also turned on the multi-threading manager in MasterCAM just to have visibility into the progress of the toolpath generation. You have to enable this prior to generation. We've sped up the video of the generation process. Once all of the tool pads have been generated and checked, we will create the stock model. We have added a separate tool path group here, just to keep the file organized, but this is optional. To add the stock model, we go to the arrow position, right click, and then select mill tool pads, stock model. We gave the stock model a bright color, just so it is easy to see and then selected all of the operations in machine group 1 to define the source operations. Next hit the green check button to create the stock model. Mastercam will add the stock model into the toolpath group, and at this stage it is only really useful visually. In Mastercam the stock model is a toolpath. In order to use it for a stock model for Machine Group 2, we need to generate a separate mesh. To generate a mesh from the stock model, pick the stock model in the Operations tree, right-click, then select Mill Tool Pads, Stock Model, Convert to Mesh. We also move the mesh to a separate level to stay organized. If the stock model toolpath is selected, it can be a bit confusing working with a mesh model as well. Maintaining good organization and processes like this is essential. Next we need to rotate and move the mesh model into the appropriate position for machine group 2. We use the transform tools in Mastercam to do this. It also helps to know the positions of the setups relative to each other for this work. For example, we configured Setup 2 to be exactly 18 inches away from Setup 1 in the x-axis for this video. The blue body that is not moving here is the stock model toolpath, while the pink one is the mesh. We then use snaps to align the mesh in the y-axis. Choosing an appropriate reference geometry element is needed for this. The stock model mesh is being aligned to the part body, which will be the master model for Machine Group 2. Now the mesh body is aligned to the part. In some cases, this will be sufficient to generate the Machine Group 2 tool pads, but we needed to add a bit of an offset to the mesh and clean up the mesh with Mastercam's Check Mesh tool to ensure we had a clean mesh that completely contained the part body. 
In this case, we offset the mesh by an eventual 20 thousandths of an inch. Each time the mesh is modified, it will need to be redefined as the stock model for the machine group. Once the stock model is ready, we can run Cam Assist. This time we will only check on the setup for Machine Group 2. Also we will change the selected plane to top. In some situations Cam Assist can almost be a one-button solution, but for others like this example, it is valuable for specific elements of the overall task. More complicated CAM operations can be challenging. There is a lot for a programmer to be aware of and keep track of. With CAM Assist helping you out, you have a few less processes to worry about. Try using CAM Assist in your own workflows and processes. We are eager to hear how it helps and where it could do more. Thanks for watching.